us tonight and give us a mind of God. Psalm 142. Uh, probably, I probably won't be real long tonight. Amen. I don't, I don't know. Well, God gets in it, but amen. We're just going to praise the Lord and get done. Amen. 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 Verse number one, just seven verses. Uh, the Bible said verse number one, of course, we know that from the title, uh, most Bibles will give a title heading above some of the Psalms, not all of them, but uh, most of them. And it says that this is uh, that mischief of David, which that simply means that it is a song of instruction. Uh, and David's writing this psalm of instruction that we can instruct us to help us. Uh, and the Bible said when he wrote this psalm, it was a prayer when he was in the cave. And that prayer that he's been praying that we know that he's in the, he was in several caves in the Bible, uh, uh, hiding from Saul different times. And we know that one of those famous caves was in that cave of Adullam uh, where he was hiding there. And that was when all that crowd that was in debt and distress and discouraged and defeated, that crowd that come, and all, that, all them men that were in debt and discouraged, defeated, that was the ones that become his mighty men. Uh, that stood with David and stayed with David in that cave down there. Uh, but the Bible says in verse number one, he says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and with my voice unto the Lord I did make my supplication. I, I poured out my complaint before him. I, I, showed, be, I showed before him my trouble. I, and when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, when thou uh, knewest my path, the Bible said, In the way wherein I walked, have they privately laid, snare, uh, laid a snare for for me, amen. He said, I, I looked on my right hand and beheld, uh, and there was no man that would know me. Uh, refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Uh, I, cried, I cried unto thee, O Lord, and I said, uh, Thou art my refuge and my portion uh, in the land of the living. Uh, well, I'm glad he's the God. Uh, uh, I know that he's the God of the dead, amen, but I'm glad he's the God of the living, amen. Uh, I'm glad that I don't have to wait to get to heaven to know him. I don't have to wait to get to heaven to be excited about him. I don't have to get to wait to get to heaven, amen, to, uh, to, to be with him, amen. I'm glad that we can fellowship with him now, know him now, I, uh, worship him now, amen, be excited about him now, I, uh, and that God will even help us now, amen. I'm glad that he is my portion uh, in the land of the living. The Bible said, attend unto my cry, uh, for I am brought very low. He said, deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. He said, my soul, uh, now, he said, bring my soul out of prison, uh, that I may praise thy name. Uh, the righteous shall compass me about, uh, uh, for thou shalt dwell bountifully with me. Uh, and the verses here, I'm interested back in verse number seven. Uh, uh, the, last, the first part of that verse, he says, that bring my soul uh, out of prison. Uh, and that thought in my heart, and you, with that thought in mind, amen, this thought of bringing our soul uh, out of prison. I want you to understand where David is in this cave, uh, but David's not praying for his body. Uh, David's not praying so much that he gets delivered from the cave itself, uh, but he's praying that God would deliver his soul. Uh, now we know the soul speaks of, uh, uh, the soul, well, the soul deals with several things in the Bible. Uh, uh, but primarily we know that our body, that our, uh, uh, us as humans, amen, uh, uh, we are a triune body just as our Lord and Savior uh, uh, is a triune God. We know that God the Father, God the Son, uh, and God the Holy Ghost make up God, amen. Uh, they're three separate, yet they're one. Uh, well, God made us that way in the, in the aspect that there is a soul, uh, uh, we have a spirit, uh, and we have a body. Uh, and that soul deals with the seat of our emotions. It deals with our heart. Uh, it deals with our spirit, our mind. Uh, uh, and then, the, of course, the, the spirit deals with uh, uh, that same part of us that's going to go to heaven to be the Lord. Uh, and then one day my body's going to get up there to be with my spirit, amen, uh, uh, with him. But the body's that, that this flesh that we still have uh, uh, in this body that is dying every day. Uh, but thank God there's a new man on the inside uh, that's living away. Amen. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, but the Bible says that he said that David is praying. Uh, and we see the trouble that he's in. He is asking God uh, uh, to bring his soul uh, out of prison. Uh, but I'm telling you, have you ever been there in your mind, uh, uh, in your heart? Amen. I mean, you feel like your mind's in prison. Uh, uh, you feel like your heart's in prison. Uh, that, that word deals with the thought of being bound uh, or being confined. Uh, uh, the, pri the word prison deals with the thought of one that is de uh, uh, detained uh, or encaged. Uh, it deals with one that is bound by feathers, uh, that is held back or kept in, uh, locked up. Uh, it deals with being trapped or locked out. 
world. Uh, it deals with being in a solitary place uh, or even under lock and key uh, to actually be held hostage. Uh, uh, for, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people tonight uh, that they are held hostage uh, by their mind. Uh, uh, they are held in bondage uh, and they are held uh, confined in their soul. Uh, their soul is being confined. Uh, uh, it's not that their body has freedom, but they're in their heart, their mind, they're bound up and locked up. I was thinking to my hard course brother Ross begin to deal a lot with this about the thought of the mind Sunday. I, and I guess that's kind of what's got my heart turning in that gear. I, I ain't got whatever you talk yet, brother. I've been thinking my heart I, about that thought about in our mind and how our mind is. I, and one thing, we need help with our mind. Amen. I, I'm telling you, you'll find out. Of course, I won't get ahead of myself, but I, I, the, the mind is the battleground. Amen. I, I, but notice this. He says, bring my soul I, out, of the, out, of, out of prison. Amen. I, you think about if the text and the context you read uh, uh, verses 1 you'll find out that he starts with a prayer uh, but love he says I cried unto the Lord uh, with my voice uh, but I'm glad that for the day that people pray for us uh, I'm glad somebody prayed for me uh, when I could not pray for myself amen uh, I'm glad that Jesus prays for us amen uh, uh, thank God for that uh, but I'm telling you it ain't going to do you a whole lot of good uh, if everybody else prays and you don't ever pray uh, friend, you're going to have to pray for yourself, amen. Uh, and I'm glad David come to a place, he said, here in this prison that he's in, uh, get, his, get his in his mind where he's at. Uh, David is being chased by Saul. Uh, uh, David is on the run. Uh, David's, uh, the Bible said that his place was empty. Uh, uh, God brought him to the palace, uh, but yet he's, he's had an empty chair at the table, uh, and he could not be uh, where God wanted him to be because uh, of Saul's backslidden state. Uh, that seek to uh, kill David. And David's on the run and David's uh, uh, fleeing from the presence of Saul. And as he's on the run, uh, uh, he finds himself in this cave uh, and he begins to pin down this psalm and he uh, begins to cry to God uh, uh, in prayer and he says, uh, my voice uh, and with my voice uh, unto the Lord I didn't make my supplication. Uh, I'm thankful that people do pray. Uh, but I'm telling you, you can't count on that, amen. Uh, you better learn how to pray. You better learn how to get a hold of God, amen. I, I'm telling you, there'll be, pro, there'll be people, and if you was honest, every one of us have been guilty of saying, we'll pray. We go right after, and we done forgot what we're supposed to pray about. Uh, we done forgot that name they mentioned. Uh, we done forgot who they were, what was going on. Uh, uh, but I'm telling you, our mind uh, is so cluttered by everything else in life. Amen. Uh, uh, Paul does everyone good to have a decluttering of the mind. Amen. Uh, our minds get so flooded uh, uh, with everything that's got to get done uh, that we get to the place in our life that we become like David. Uh, and we are being held in our own prison. I was thinking about that man. Remember that account I gave you years ago? I can't remember who it was now. I didn't look it up today. But there's that, that, that duke that had a brother. Uh, now as he began to try to take uh, over his land, they, what they did is they locked his, he locked his, uh, I can't remember if it was his uncle or brother. I can't remember how that went now. But uh, uh, he locked that, that, that duke up in, uh, in the prison tower up there. Uh, and he didn't even put bars on the door. Uh, uh, he didn't uh, uh, chain nothing up. He just, uh, all he did, was every day uh, he bring him in fine food uh, that man loved to eat that duke and uh, uh, he sat there and he ate and he got so big uh, that he couldn't even get out the door uh, and he become held prison uh, by his own will uh, if I'm telling you there's a lot of people like that tonight uh, they're under prison uh, they're under uh, confinement uh, of their own doing gave them in their own will they're being held captive because of what they've done and you understand here David is making a prayer he is praying to the Lord. I, I will say this. I love this thought. I, this psalm as it starts in a prayer. I, you can mark it down, friend. It'll end in a praise. Amen. I, and the Bible said in the last verse, he said I, I, that I may praise I, thy name. I, if you'll start in prayer, you can end in praise. Amen. I, I tell you, a lot of times our day in our life, we start in prayer. Amen. We can end the day in a praise. Amen. I, I notice what he says. He said, I cried uh, unto the Lord with my voice. Uh, and with my voice unto the Lord did I make my uh, supplication. Uh, there's a prayer that is involved. Uh, he begins to deal with the pity that is showed. Uh, he said, I poured out my complaint before him. I, I showed I, I showed before him my trouble. I, I, if you was honest, a lot of our prayers are complaining. Amen. Well, when's the last time we got down and we, we, we prayed, but we wasn't praying and complaining, amen. 
A lot of times we get down to pray. David's really what David's doing is getting honest with God. David, but David is complaining uh, uh, to the Lord of his trouble. Uh, David is saying, look, do you not see what is going on? Uh, uh, do you not see where I am? Uh, I'm not in the palace. I'm not at the table. Uh, I'm hiding in the cave. Uh, I'm trying to scavenge for food. Uh, uh, while Saul's eating the fine things of life, uh, he's over there on the throne that I've been anointed to have. David is throwing himself a pity party uh, uh, here in verse number two, uh, and he's pouring out his complaint before God. Uh, I'm not saying that that necessarily I, I'm glad that we can go to God I, and give God our complaints I, but it's sad no to know that uh, most of our praying uh, is complaining amen and boy, I'm you, I don't want to be like that I, I'm glad I can't go before God and pour out my complaints but I don't want to be guilty if that's the only time I ever go to God is when I got something to complain about amen David here he says I poured out my complaint before him I showed him uh, my trouble notice uh, he begins to show the Lord about his path he said uh, in verse 3 when uh, uh, my spirit was overwhelmed uh, uh, within me uh, uh, when thou sh- then uh, then thou uh, knewest my path uh, I'm glad God knew his path all along amen uh, uh, but David thought if he complained enough then God would see where he's at uh, God already knew where David was amen uh, but I'm telling you that's where we get to in our lives we feel like God's left us alone uh, uh, God's forgot all about it but I'm glad he knows exactly uh, uh, where you are uh, he knows exactly what's going on uh, he knows every time you become overwhelmed uh, uh, when life gets so big uh, uh, that you feel like you can't uh, uh, get out from and under it uh, but friend I'm glad thank God you see that David said uh, uh, when thou, thou knowest my path uh, in the way wherein I walked uh, uh, they have probably laid a snare uh, uh, for me that crowd was coming against him uh, and sneaking up and laying traps for him. Uh, uh, friends, you see that David is uh, uh, talking about his path. Uh, David is beginning to reveal, uh, uh, to him about his peace, uh, that he's lost peace. He said in verse 4, I looked uh, on my right hand and beheld, uh, uh, there was no man uh, uh, that would know me. Boy, he said, all that crowd that was even with him in the cave. Bible says there's about 400 of them come at one time. Uh, all those men that come to that cave and begin to say, David, we want to make you king. Uh, uh, we, want, uh, uh, we want you to uh, uh, help us. We want, uh, uh, we want you to be our king and uh, uh, we'll serve you. And all that crowd, David said, nobody really knows me. Nobody knows my heart. Uh, Bob, I can see David. You ever, you ever felt like that? Uh, you ever been in a crowded room and still feel alone? Amen. Uh, you ever feel like uh, uh, that nobody understands where you are? Uh, nobody understands what's going on? Uh, uh, that nobody really knows uh, uh, really you? Amen. Uh, I think David gets to a place. And what he's saying? He said, uh, refuge. Uh, failed me. Uh, but he said, you know what he's saying? Uh, I could find no peace. Uh, I found no place to get away. Uh, I found no refuge from Saul. Uh, had where David went, he tracked him down uh, and he had to run and hide uh, between Saul and the Philistines. Uh, all that crowd, he's at a constant uh, uh, running for his life and fleeing. Uh, uh, for many years that David's life was on the run. He said, refuge has failed me. You know what he's saying? He don't matter where I go, there it is. Bob, well, you ever felt like that? The problem gets begin, becomes so overwhelming to you. Uh, no matter if you try to go to work, no matter where, where you go home, no matter if you even come to church, uh, uh, where you go, that problem begins to overwhelm your heart, uh, to overwhelm your life, and uh, you feel like refuge has failed. Uh, Bob, well, tell you, there's been times, uh, and I know it's because of me. Uh, it ain't God's fault. Uh, it ain't the preacher's fault. Uh, it ain't the church member's fault. Uh, Bob, well, tell you, there's times you come in the house of God, uh, and you come in, you go out, uh, and you didn't get no help and you didn't hear from heaven and God didn't speak to your heart. I promise you every time it's on us. Amen. But I'm telling you, it's sad we come in that we find this is supposed to be our place of refuge. Boy, so many times Christians come in and go out unchanged and unhelped. The refuge failed them. And I know a lot of that's because where they're at, they're in that stage of complaining uh, than they are in the stage of trying to find God. Amen. Uh, but David here, I, I'm glad that his heart begins to change. He said, refuge has failed me. I, no man careth for my soul. But I'm glad verse number five, something happened. 
And I don't know what took place, but thank God he got as he got to talking to the Lord. I, I love how that happens, amen. I, boy, you go to before God and you get to complaining to God, say, Lord, woe's me. I, here I am again, undone. I, I'm unclean before long. You look up and say, Lord, I, there you are. I'm lifted up. I, oh, Lord, there you are, and I see you. I, and who you are, and he said, verse five, I, I cried unto thee, O Lord, and said, I, I, thou art my refuge and my portion. I, and the land of living, you know what he's saying? I, nobody knows me. I, nobody Nobody understands me. I, I know my refuge has failed. I, nobody cares. I, but he said, Lord, I know you're there. Amen. And I know you'll care. Boy, I'm glad, thank God, you see the, his portion. He begins to deal with his portions with the Lord. He said, I know that. My portion's in the land of the living. In verse number six, he deals with the persecution. He said, I attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. I deliver me from my persecutors, I, uh, for they are stronger than I. Boy, he's dealing with those that are persecuting him and running after him. I, but then in verse number uh, seven, he is what it's thought of this prison. I, he said, bring my soul I, out of prison. I, boy, I'm telling you, the prison that he's in. I, he made several statements here. I got my wife's hair all over my it's, it's wrapping me up, amen. Uh, thank God. That it said, verse, I hope it's hers, amen. Verse, look, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, amen. Things like a sticky. Hallelujah, amen. Sorry. Hallelujah, amen. Verse number, excuse me, amen. Verse number, uh, where's I at? Verse number seven, lost my place, amen. Verse, notice, notice in his heart where he says, uh, uh, bring my soul out of prison. In verse number seven, uh, uh, where he makes that statement, that notice the thoughts of where uh, uh, David's heart is. Uh, uh, he makes several statements here. He says, uh, uh, he says in verse number two, he, say, he begins to show uh, uh, that this prison that he is in, uh, it has brought trouble uh, uh, to his life. Uh, in verse number three, he says that he his spirit uh, was overwhelmed. Uh, the Bible says that there were snares. Uh, in verse number three, he says that there's no refuge. Uh, in verse number four, that he is brought very low. Uh, in verse number six, uh, in verse number uh, uh, six, he, in verse number seven, he said they're stronger than I. Speaking, uh, that he shows the weakness that is brought in his life, uh, and then that restraint uh, uh, being found in this prison. Uh, uh, David here is showing uh, uh, where he's at, and many times uh, in our heart and our mind uh, we get to this place uh, uh, where we are bound up amen Bob tell you ever seen a day where a lot of Christians they just look like they're bound up Bob tell you it seems like they're 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 bound in their circumstances, uh, they're bound in their sorrows. Uh, uh, they're, they're bound up and everything going on. Uh, they, they, when you get in that prison, uh, boy, it's like being in a dark place. Uh, it's like being in a place with no joy, uh, uh, no peace, uh, no comfort. Uh, I feel like nobody cares. Uh, it feels like you're alone. Uh, if I'm telling you, where David was uh, in a crowded cave. He said, I'm all alone, Lord. Nobody cares. But I'm telling you, here David is in this place in his mind. He said, Lord, you got to bring my soul out of this. Uh, Lord, my soul's in prison. Uh, but i got to think about several things. I wrote down several things. We'll give you some thoughts. Amen. Uh, but let me just give you as kind of a way of introduction. I thought about this. Uh, uh, there, there is a lot of people that are bound by their hurt. But I'm telling you, they're, they're so bound by hurt. Amen. Uh, they just can't get over it. But I'm saying there are some people that go through life uh, and that, that something's happened to them somewhere along the line uh, and that's all they want to talk about. Uh, it's all they remember. Uh, it's all they focus on. Uh, they can't never seem to get past it. Uh, they can't never seem to get over it. Uh, it has overwhelmed them. Uh, it, is, it has got them to a place uh, that they have lost that refuge of peace. Uh, they've lost that refuge of joy. Uh, if I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're in a dark place. Or lie. I mean, notice this. He says that uh, uh, he comes to a place and he said that uh, there's trouble there uh, and he and this thought of uh, that those that are bound uh, they, they bound themselves because they're locked up but I'm telling you, they, they're under restraint uh, they're confined by their herd amen just can't get over it but I'm telling you, I've, I've met Christians down through the line you talk to them and say I just I can't get past it preacher I can't get over it. Uh, every time uh, you, you ever seen someone, I, and I'm telling you, there's been things in my life uh, that there's been some things that's been able real easy. I mean, one prayer, uh, and God get it out of your mind, and you're over it. I mean, uh, there's been other things that you think you're over. Uh, and you think everything's good. Uh, and all of a sudden, somewhere down the line, way down the line, uh, all of a sudden, something happens, some word said, or some scene, uh, and all of a sudden, it triggers, and it's right back again. Uh, and you think in your heart, boy, I thought I got rid of all that. Uh, I thought all that 
that was going all that hard surfaces back up. I said, we better learn how to be like David, the pray, the pray to God and plead with God to bring us out of that prison of being hurt. Amen. And there's a prison that just thought of being bound. You don't realize there are some that are bound by habits. Just can't lay it down. Just can't get rid of it. But I'm telling you, there, there, there is a, it'd be amazed at those that hold things in their life uh, that they, uh, they know they ought not hold. Uh, uh, they play with things they know they ought not play with. Uh, they got habits in their life they know they ought not be there. Uh, but for, I'm telling you, they, they try. They, but I'm telling you, they're, they're hung on to that thing. Uh, it's got such a grip on them. Uh, it's such an addiction in their heart. Uh, hey, you realize there's a lot more addictions than just uh, uh, drugs and alcohol, amen? Uh, and that's bad enough. And that's wicked and out of hell. Uh, but for, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people, uh, they hold a lot of habits in life uh, and it keeps them bound up. Uh, it keeps them under a strain. Uh, it keeps them locked up uh, in a solitary place uh, that they cannot do what they ought to do for God. Right. Bound by habits. There are some that are bound by hopelessness. They just feel like there's no hope. Feel like there's no way out. There, it ain't going to get no better. Uh, you, ever, you ever talk to some people, I mean, you're almost scared to ask them how they're doing because you know it's going to be a 10,000 list why everything's wrong in life. I tell you, talk to some people, they'll, they'll go off 10 minutes of how they're, this hurts, that hurts, this is bad, that's wrong, this fell apart, that broke, uh, uh, this happened, that happened, somebody said this, somebody did that. Uh, if I'm telling you, on and on they go, uh, they ain't never got a joyful song, uh, they ain't never got nothing good to say, uh, they ain't never got uh, uh, anything to brag about the Lord about. Uh, it's always sad, it's always doom and gloom, uh, it's always so bad and dark and wicked uh, and vile and everything's uh, uh, out to get them and there's a bug, there's a bugger in every bush amen uh, uh, you find that crowd uh, they, they are living bound by hopelessness no hope but then there's those I'm just trying to give you a little bit of things amen I'll get you here back in the text second I, I, know, no, I thought about this there's a lot of people that's bound by hindrances boy they're, they're hindered Bible said you know what the Bible said over there in the book of Hebrews he said you did run well who did hinder you well, I'm saying there's a lot the Bible talks about it over there in Peter. He said that, uh, talking about our prayers, uh, that, 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 our, that our prayers will be hindered uh, if we ain't right with our spouse. And uh, if that husband don't get that thing right, uh, that it'll hinder our praying uh, and hinder our, our, our communion with God and getting along with the Lord. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of hindrances that we have in our life. Uh, how can I say it like this? There's a lot of hazards that are bounding us up. They're keeping us confined, uh, uh, keeping us locked up, uh, keeping you from uh, uh, the experience, the freedom, and the, the joys and the liberty of serving the Lord. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of you talk to people, some people, and they'll tell you, oh, well, boy, if I serve God, uh, that, that's going to that's gonna make me have a bunch of do's and don'ts. And if I, if I live for the Lord, I'm going to have to give this up and give that up. And I won't be able to do this anymore. I won't be able to do that anymore. Uh, they view the Christian life as uh, uh, being bound. My friend, they got it all twisted up. Uh, I'm telling you, there, there is liberty uh, in living for Him. Uh, there is liberty in serving God. Uh, there there is that peace and that joy of salvation that comes with serving him that will only come by living for God. I'm saying any other life will be a bound up life. And friends, you see that there is those that are, that are being held hazard. But I thought about, you ever, you ever thought about, I was thinking about this, you ever, you ever thought about that, that first sin? I thought it was interesting. Go all the way back to Genesis. Bro, Zeke, that, that very first sin in the Bible as soon as an Adam and Eve, as soon as they sinned, brother Tim, the Bible said their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked. I mean, nakedness was the very first thing they saw. And you think we ain't still dealing with that today? Well, I'm telling you, that was the first sin uh, that they noticed. Uh, that was the first sin that they were exposed to. Uh, they knew uh, that they were naked. Ain't it interesting? He said, oh, you'll know both good and evil. You'll be like gods. And the first thing they knew, they knew they were naked. They knew nakedness, amen. Uh, there, there's people, they don't know they're naked, amen. But uh, uh, they knew the, uh, that, and I thought it was it. You go, I'm glad you're all the way to Revelation. Uh, uh, all the way to Revelation uh, in chapter number one. Uh, boy, I'm telling you, the first one you see in heaven is our Lord and Savior. Uh, in Revelation one, the Bible said that he was clothed uh, down to his foot, brother Tim. Uh, oh, thank God, I'm glad uh, that God took care of that. Uh, the Bible said in Revelation five, uh, oh, and those are sitting around the throne, uh, those 24 elders, uh, when they're sitting around 
around the throne. The Bible said uh, they are robed in white linen clothed. Uh, oh, thank God, I'm glad. Boy, thank God heaven's gonna take care of the nakedness, amen. Uh, uh, but I'm glad, my, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of people, uh, they are bound up by hazards, bound up by sin. Sin's got them bound up, locked up hindered uh, that they can't serve the Lord, uh, being detained, uh, being encaged. Uh, what I'm saying, the soul's being encaged, the soul's being locked up, kept in, uh, bound by fetters. Uh, uh, that thought, uh, uh, that I thought about this, that there are some that are bound uh, uh, by hollow ruts in their life. You know, there's a lot of people, they're just going through this life and they're just in a rut. Get stuck, I mean, good people, I mean, really believe the love of the Lord. But get placed and it all becomes a routine to them. And it's a rut to them. Uh, and they're just trudging along in the same old ditch. Uh, and they feel like they can't get out. They feel like they're just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again in your life. Uh, and your life becomes a rut. Uh, and for I'm telling you, uh, uh, they, he, they're in a pri- David's in a prison. Uh, uh, not in the prison of uh, uh, being uh, uh, in his body, but a prison uh, of his mind. He's locked up. He's in uh, uh, the rut. I can see David thinking, all I do uh, is go from stronghold to stronghold. Uh, uh, go Going from cave to cave, uh, uh, running and hiding the same old thing. Uh, every day I wake up, Saul's out to get me. Uh, every day I go to bed, uh, uh, the Philistines may approach at any time. Uh, if I'm telling David's in a place in his mind, uh, he said, Lord, you've got to bring me out of this. But I'm telling the thought of being in that rut, the thought of being in a hollow rut, the thought, I thought about this being bound by the hour. There are some people that are just bound by the day. Well, their days is all they have. They, they, they always, they're focused on the day. They're focused on this. They can't get their mind uh, past the day, amen. Uh, they can't even look to future things because they're hung up on the day, amen. Uh, and there, there are so many things that, that people are bound by. And that thought, what he's saying, that thought here where he says, bring my soul up. Uh, out of, out of prison. Uh, that word soul deals with the body uh, and the mind. Uh, and when he says, bring my soul, he's saying, bring my mind uh, out of the prison. Amen. Uh, boys, uh, asking God, Lord, would you deliver my mind? Uh, well, there's so much in the Bible that speaks of our mind, our thoughts uh, uh, towards the mind. Uh, and I thought about this. Uh, I just wrote down about three things, four, four things. Amen. But I got some more. But uh, I noticed this. Amen. Uh, I got four points for each four points. Amen. Uh, uh, but the, uh, the thought that in our mind, Mind, amen. Uh, and we'll come back to our text when we, uh, when we get done, amen. I'll try to be mindful, amen. Uh, uh, but notice this, amen. I want to show the, 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 the power that's of the mind. You ever thought about the power your mind holds? Do you realize how much power your mind has over your life? Well, I've said a lot of people in their mind, amen. The uh, Bible, says, Bible says over there in Proverbs 4, verse 23, the Bible said part of that verse, he said, uh, uh, keep, keep thy heart with all diligence, uh, for out of it are the issues of life. I'm talking about the mind, the heart. The uh, Bible said in Proverbs 23, 7, he said, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, for as, the, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You realize that? Uh, as you think in your heart, so is he. You realize the Bible says, you know when, Bible, when Paul was over there uh, and Paul was in prison uh, and he was standing with, after Fe, uh, uh, Felix took him over there to King Agrippa and he's standing there in front of King Agrippa in Acts 26 uh, and verse number 2, uh, uh, the Bible said he looked at the king and he said, I think myself happy. He's bound uh, in prison, uh, but he said, I think myself. You know what he's saying? His mind controlled what his actions were doing. But I'm telling you, you realize that you can, uh, uh, your mind controls where you are in your life, amen. The state of your mind, the, the state of your mind controls the attitude of your life, amen. He, he made a statement, he said, I think myself happy. You know what he's saying? I'm going to purpose to be happy. He said, it don't matter what's going on, I, I'm going to purpose myself to be happy. But until you think about it, he's going to a chopping block. He knows he's going to die. He knows, but he's hoping he just uh, he wants to go to Rome to get the gospel before he dies. I mean, uh, and he's standing before King Agrippa and he said, I think myself happy. He went on down through there and after he told his testimony, uh, he said, the only thing I, I, the only thing I would change uh, is these chains being back. He said, thank God. Uh, I wish you were where I was at. He mixed up these chains. That's what he told King Agrippa. He said, I wish you had what I had. He said, I'm standing here bound. I got more freedom than you do, and you're sitting on your throne. 
He said, I, I'm bound by chains, but I've got more liberty uh, than you have. Uh, boy, ain't it amazing in the Bible how you go through the Bible and you think about Joseph. Like, I think Joseph was in prison all that time. Uh, he had more liberty in that prison. Uh, the Bible said that he uh, had control of the prison. Uh, the prisoner guards just said, here, you have the reins. Uh, do what you, I'm telling you, he had more liberty in prison uh, than most people have free. Uh, I tell you, you think about, uh, oh, they're even uh, uh, not just Joseph, but you think about Jeremiah. All those times they, la- they lock him up and throw him in the mire uh, and throw him in prison. Uh, yet he just kept on preaching, uh, kept on serving God, uh, kept on living for him. Uh, every time Peter get locked up, uh, them disciples get locked up. They say, I can't it worthy uh, to suffer shame for his name. Uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I tell you, thank God Peter's over there. Uh, and the Bible said, but the prayers of the church. Amen. Uh, in Acts 12, he's over there. He, he's got so much peace, he just fell asleep between the, between the, the dudes fixing to chop his head off. I have to, I can see him hooked up to the executioner. Boy, he slings up, falls asleep, and lays his head on his shoulder. I think just takes him a nap. I don't know about you, but if they done took my friend James, I done took his head off. I'm telling you, I knew that I was locked up and I was the next one in line. By morning time, I was going to be dead. I don't know how much sleep I'd be doing. But I'm telling you, old Peter has so much faith in God and trust in the Lord. I think he just took a nap. He got led all the way out. The, the, the chains fell off. I mean, nobody woke up. The door swung open. The lights got turned on. He walks plumb outside the city gate and he he thinks I'm just a dream, amen. He says, somebody pinch me. Is this really real? God's so good. Oh, thank God I'm telling you of the fact that God, I'm mad God can deliver us out of prison, amen. Bob saying, thank God, oh, Paul. Paul's over there. Bob saying, Paul and Silas in, in Acts 16, men I cry. Bob saying, he's over there about midnight, they get to singing. Bob saying, I can see that crowd. I'd like to know what song they sung, Amen. But I tell you, and it wasn't no, it won't no whispering, amen. It won't no just looking at each other. The Bible said that crowd heard. They heard. Well, all those other prisoners, they heard them over there. Boy, thank God they heard that crowd and said, man, what's God in that bunch? Well, man, they're over there. They're shouting it out. They're praising the Lord. I, I can see them taking off, and all of a sudden, Silas or Paul, want them to take off and get to shouting and praising God. I, I tell you, thank God, get to worshiping the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you, in the middle of all that, and the, the earth begin to shake, and God begin to move, and God begin to bless. Oh, thank God what God did of the day and hour of those men that were in prison. Yet they said, God, deliver my soul. But I'm saying God didn't deliver the body, but God delivered the soul, amen. Oh, I'm telling you. Oh, thank God. I'm, you, everyone in my camps, I read you, God did take the body out of the prison. But I'm telling you, before that, their soul had done been delivered. I, Oh, God done, God done something in their soul and their hearts, amen. God brought a peace into them. I'm telling you, there, there's a power that is in our mind, the power to think ourselves. I ain't trying to preach some health, wealth, gospel. I'm just telling you, I'm glad my mind, when you have the right kind of mind towards God and the right kind of mindset towards Him, it will change how you live, amen. I'm telling you, thank God it will change your circumstance. But I'm glad what it what it'll do is it'll change you in your circumstance, amen. Now, circumstance, it don't matter what comes. Thank God you still be happy in it. I mean, thank yourself. When's the last time you woke up and said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna thank myself happy today. Thank God, I'm telling you, it don't matter what comes my way. I'm gonna thank myself happy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be happy today, amen. But I'm telling you, when's the last time you had any kind of purpose in your heart like that? I mean a purpose for the things of God. Well, when's the last time on your way to church you said, you know what I'm going to do tonight? I think I'm going to shout. Amen. I'm going to purpose myself to shout, amen. amen. I remember I'd go to church sometime, brother, brother Zeke, and I'd sock myself up. I said, I'm going to purpose myself. I'm going to shout it out. I'm going to worship the Lord. I mean, if everybody else is dead at 4 o'clock, I'm going to shout. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm telling you, thank God. I mean, when's the last time you made yourself be happy? I mean, when ain't nothing to be happy about. But you said, I'm going to be happy today. I'm going to make myself be happy. Amen. I think that's where Paul got to. I'm telling you, our mind, we, can, we have the, the ability to be able to do that. You realize that? You have the ability to rise above your circumstance. God created a mind in your heart that you can rise above where you are in your life. Amen. Thank God to thank yourself. 
make yourself I mean I thank myself to be happy no no the power of the mind notice the, the there is the the position of the mind as we said uh, I won't dear long but uh, we know that the soul deals with uh, uh, the the heart and the soul deals with the saved part of us uh, that is saved we know that the body itself is it still has its old nature uh, God did not save my flesh my body is still uh, uh, the same as it was uh, but thank God I'm glad that there is a new man uh, on the inside of us uh, and where your mind comes comes into play is uh, the mind is the battleground. Uh, do you realize uh, that your body uh, and your soul both want control of the mind? They're both after control of your mind. And there's a battle that takes place every day of your life. And there's a battle raging in your soul. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to start coming to the place. Lord, I ain't going to listen to my body. Lord, I want to listen to my soul. I want to listen to my spirit. God, bring my soul out of prison. In other words, you know what they're saying? Lord, don't let my body control this thing. My flesh, Lord, like to go out there and take take Saul's head off. My flesh uh, would like to go sit on that throne and tell tell Saul that I've already been anointed king. You need to get in line. Uh, and God done give me the throne. Uh, I can see David. My, David was a warrior. Uh, David was a fighter. I'm telling you, David was an old weak man. Uh, and David would have gladly went out there and fought the battle and won the battle. But he knew God wouldn't let him do it. Uh, and David said, I'm not going to let my mind, uh, uh, let my body control my mind uh, and my flesh control my mind. Uh, but I want, uh, I want my God to uh, to allow my heart, my spirit, uh, the same part of me, uh, to control the mind. I'm saying, you, thank God. Uh, when you think about this stall, that there ought to be this protection. Amen. Uh, I've got so much. Let, my goodness, amen. Hmm. Notice this, amen, the power of the mind, the, the position of our mind. Uh, uh, the Bible says this over there. Uh, the Bible says 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Uh, uh, the Bible says 2 Corinthians 4. Notice what it says uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Uh, uh, the Bible said in verse number, uh, uh, verse number 16, he said, For which cause we faint not, uh, uh, though the outward man perish, uh, yet the inward man uh, is renewed uh, day by day. You realize that? I, I'm telling you, that inward man inside of you. You realize the day, you remember when you first got saved, the day you got saved? I mean, how when you woke up, well, I'm telling you, you just, you just knew God give you a clean slate. God give you a fresh start. I, I mean, there's a peace flooded your soul. I, there's a burden that lifted off of you. I, now, I know some preachers, preachers say to go out there and they heard the birds singing different songs. I'll be honest with you, I can't remember. Amen. I, I, I got part of Alzheimer's. Amen. I ain't, sure, I ain't sure what the birds were singing that next morning. Amen. I, I, but I know this much. There's a burden that rolled away. I, there, there was a difference, thank God, that took place in my heart. I, I'm telling you, thank God, that new slate, I, that, that renewed uh, spirit, that new man, Oh God, give me a new man. I mean, a clean man. You ever worked all day, be nasty, and you go in, you take a shower, but you just feel refreshed and renewed, and just feel better because you're clean. Amen. But I'm telling you, God saved by the grace of God. God, that blood washed all that nastiness away, and I felt clean for the first time. I felt peace flood my soul, and joy come that I never knew. Oh, thank God for the day that I got saved by the grace of God. I want you to understand something. Do you realize every day since that day can be just like that day? Every day that new man is renewed. You ever thought about that? That's why I don't get old, but Tim. People tell you, oh, you'll get over this. No, that new man don't because it's new every morning. <laughs> Thank God it's, it's renewed every day. It's just like I got saved last night, amen. I, I tell you, it's just that new to me. I, it's that fresh to me. It's like I just repented yesterday. I, I mean, the Holy Ghost of God flooded my soul. I, that new man on the inside, I, he's as new I, as he was the day I got saved. I, it's just as real, I, just as right, I, I, just as I, I fresh as it was I, the moment it happened, amen. It's renewed every day. But here's the problem. Every day we don't live like it's new. You know why? Because the old man's perishing. That old man's dying. And how many times we go through life and we live our day and we live that day like, it's, like, it's, like we're dead. We live that day like we're dying. I mean, everything's rotten, everything's bad, everything. You know what that is? You're living according to the flesh. Your mind, the flesh is controlling your mind that day. 
because of the Spirit of God's control in your mind that day, it'd be a, re- a new day. It'd be a renewed day. It'd be like a day from a renewed day by day. Amen. Every day is like it was the day you got in. Oh, but I'm telling the outward man, that outward man's perishing. That outward man's dying. But the power of the mind, oh, thank God we need to understand the position that the mind is the battleground of where soul and body fight. Amen. For your control of your mind. And I'm telling you, if you allow, you allow your every day you live, and I'm telling you, so preacher, it didn't feel like it was new that day. I promise you know what happened? The flesh controlled your mind that day. The body controlled your mind. Because I'm telling you, when the spirit controls your mind, it'll be like it's new all over again. Well, I'm saying thank God for that, amen. You just notice the position, the peak, the power, the, the, the purging of the mind, amen. Uh, we can read over there uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 uh, about the purging of the mind. I'm saying there's some strongholds. Uh, uh, there's some things in the mind that need to be uh, uh, cast down and cast down. Uh, that need to brought up, be brought under control, amen. Uh, there needs to be the purging of the mind. Uh, there's the peace of the mind. Uh, oh, I'm glad that God brings peace. Uh, or if you read Philippians 4, 6, and 7 about uh, how God... Uh, uh, the peace of God, that, that prayer, they begin to pray, uh, and God brings peace to the mind. Uh, the Bible says in John 14, 27, uh, uh, peace I leave you, my peace uh, I give unto you. Uh, uh, not as the world giveth, but I give unto you. Uh, uh, let not your hearts be troubled, uh, uh, neither let them be afraid. Uh, I'm glad that God's peace is in us. Uh, oh, the peace uh, that God, uh, when you purge the mind, uh, and you see the position of the mind, the power of the mind, and you allow God to flood your heart with peace. Well, God will bring a peace to your mind. God can bring a peace there. That's what David's praying for. David's saying, bring my soul out of prison. You know what he's saying? He's saying this, Lord. He knows what he said. Bring my soul out of prison. He's talking about the Savior's freedom. Lord, would you free me from myself? David ain't asking to be freed from Saul. David ain't asked to be freed from the cave. David's not asked to be freed. He said, Lord, Get my soul out of prison. Lord, my mind is bound up. It is locked up. It is, it is restrained. It is being held captive by this world, by the problems, by the overwhelming, by the snare, all the things. that they, He said, all this stuff's got my mind all out of sorts. Now, I'm in prison, Lord. Lord, he's, he's asking, Lord, I need freedom. Well, I'm glad only God can bring that. He says, bring my soul. You know what he's saying? Lord, I trust you. Lord, I'm telling you, I'm glad I can't trust myself. But I can trust him. When we was getting ready, I told Alice, I said, I, really? I said, I, I said, I'll be honest with you. I, of course, I was kidding with her. I said, I don't want to go tonight because I don't like the preacher. She said, who's preaching? She said, we have somebody coming, ain't we? Well, I'm telling you, the more I live, the more I hate myself. I'm saying God help us to get to a place, our life, our hearts, amen, that we need God to bring us out because we can't bring ourselves. Amen. Well, I'm saying a lot of times in our mind we think, oh, I can bring myself out of this. Like, Boy, I'm telling you, you can't do it, amen. Right. I'm glad salvation cures a lot of things, but I'm telling you, salvation don't fix everything. Salvation don't fix that flesh, amen. That old man's still dying. He still wants death. He wants to corrupt things. He wants the dead things. He wants to waller in that mess like a pig. Uh, wallers in sour, amen, in the, uh, in, in the mud. Go back to the, the, the mud, amen. I, I'm telling you, God help us to realize our heart uh, that God give us a new man on the inside uh, and that, that that new man's the only thing uh, that can bring us out of the old man, amen. Uh, the Bible says, he said, bring my soul out of prison. Uh, Oh, I'm telling you, oh, thank God. Uh, well, it's a good day when you die to yourself. Uh, it's a good day uh, uh, when, you, when you're being brought out of prison, dying to yourself, uh, and the old man dies, uh, that you crucify the old man, uh, and that you walk in the new man. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, he said, bring my soul out of prison. Uh, there's a free, the Savior brings a freedom. Uh, notice what he says. I love the thought. He said, uh, that I may praise thy name. He said, Lord, I want to give you some glory. Lord, bring me out so my new man can shout it out. Lord, let, let my new man worship you. Uh, oh, Lord, I want to praise your wonderful name. Uh, I want to give you glory. Lord, I pray that you'd help me fix my mind and fix my heart. Uh, Lord, it, uh, that he's saying my mind has messed my praise up. Well, I'm telling you, a lot of times, you know why we don't shout it out? Because our mind's out of sorts. Well, I'm saying God fix our soul, amen. God fix our mind, our heart, the, the seat of our emotions. 
that we may praise thy name. Notice what he said, thy, the, the, the righteous shall compass me about. But I love that. You know what he's saying? He said, I want some, the fellowship of the saints. Amen. But I'm glad he, David, he got done saying, he said, I couldn't find nobody. Nobody knows me. Nobody cared for my soul. But gets down to verse 7. He says, Lord, let the righteous compass me about. Lord, let all that crowd that saved, that, that had the same mind I got, Lord, the same ones that want to be brought out of prison with me. Uh, Lord, I pray that you let that crowd come around. Uh, oh, I'm telling you, say they, they'll, they shall come. Uh, but I'm telling you, thank God for the saints of God uh, and the people of God are hard, amen, that we can commune with uh, and have fellowship with. Uh, and verse number, the last part of verse 7, he said, uh, not only uh, the Savior's freedom, the saints' fellowship, but he said there's a sure fullness. Uh, he said that for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Uh, oh, it deals with being full. Uh, it deals with that thought of that being renewed. Uh, David is saying that he's still in the cave but thank God the cave's not in him Bob J said I'm still in this cave I can't get out of the cave but Lord you're going to deal back notice what he says thou shalt compass me about thou shalt deal bountifully with me he said Lord it ain't happened yet but Lord it's going to Lord, I know it's going to happen, Lord. I, I got faith to trust in you, Lord, and you bring me out. I, I'll be around the saints of God. I, uh, Lord, when you bring me out, praise will come back. I, Lord, when you bring me out, I, there'll be a bountiful, I, there'll be a fullness that'll take place. I, oh, thank God, why do you I desire to be, I, get your soul and your mind, your heart out of prison, I, I, that you can I, I be bountiful with him. And I'm telling you, David ain't talking about being on the throne having a bunch of treasures around him. Oh, thank God. I'm glad when he deals bountiful. Oh, everything God does is to the excess. Amen. But I'm glad God deals in the full. But I'm saying you think about your Bible. Amen. I'm glad God deals, deals with the full. Amen. Everything he does, he fills it up. Amen. But I'm telling you, thank God for that. And you understand that David is saying, Thou shalt deal bountiful with me. Lord, if you bring my soul out, Lord, when you bring my soul out, I, Lord, I know you shall deal bountifully. You know what he's saying? Lord, I know you're going to do it right. Boy, this, this, his heart is this. Lord, I know what you're going to do. Uh, and when you do it, it's going to be right. Uh, and Lord, when you do it, it's going to be to the full. Uh, and Lord, when you do it, it's going to be uh, exactly the way you want it done. Uh, and I think David is saying, Lord, uh, I, I'm tired of the shape I'm in. Uh, I'm tired of my mind, my mind being bound up. Uh, I'm tired of being uh, uh, in a place and a heart. Uh, but I'm saying we ought to be there. Uh, we ought to get sick of being bound, uh, uh, being locked up and restrained in our heart. Uh, when's the last time you you knew in your life uh, that you truly walk in the freedom uh, and the liberty that God has given you uh, in your mind and your heart uh, and for that you can serve him uh, uh, with full assurance and knowing uh, that you are free uh, uh, to worship him. May me live for him. Well, I'm telling you too many times we walk in this life we're bound. I'm saying every time we get bound up I promise you it's your flesh is the issue. It's always us. You've heard me make this statement. Let me say it. I'm closing. Amen. I remember years ago, and I think I've told it here. I can't remember. Amen. But let me just tell it again. I remember years ago, I, I, I was in, I was down there on the Outer Banks, and, and I'm telling you, there's so much going on, Brother Tim, and I broke down. I mean, I, I, was, I was about as broke as I could get. I, I remember I drove out on the beach that night. You drive your truck out there, and I parked out there and watched them waves for hours. I, and it was dark, and I was sitting there crying and praying and trying to find the mind of God and trying to find the will of God. I'd say it felt like last year's bird's nest. felt like everything was dead, everything was dry. I mean, I couldn't find God. I'd study and read and felt like God wasn't nowhere in the pages. Brother Tim, I'd preach and felt like it was empty. I, I'd pray and felt like it was bouncing off the cell. I mean, everything felt like it was just dead. I, I thought, Lord, where are you at? I, God, what is going on? I, uh, Lord, everything I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing it in vain. I, I feel like there's no power, there's no unction, I, there's no touch, there's no breath uh, on anything going on in my life. I, I was a begging God, Lord, trying to bring me out of that prison. I, I'm telling you, I got on the phone. I called Brother David Reed. I, I began to talk to that preacher. I said, pray. I said, you got to pray for me. I'm dying on the inside. I said, I feel like I can't find God. I don't know what's going on, but I, I need you to help me pray. He said, well, I've got the answer for that one, preacher. It's simple. I said, what is it? I thought he was going to show. I said, I need God. I said, you got to help me find God. Show, show me a verse. Show me something that I can find God. How, how can I get the, the power of the touch of God back? He said, I'll tell you what the problem is, preacher. I said, what's that? He says, you. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute now. I said, I, what's, what's wrong with me? 
Watch out, I almost got offended. Amen. I said, what do you mean it's me? What are you talking about? That ain't what I'm looking for. That ain't what I want to hear. Amen. But I'm telling you what I found out. That preacher's right. Amen. Every time God's had to pull his hand back, every time the breath of God's left and the touch of God's gone and your prayers become brass and your joy is gone and you serve God and there's no joy in it and you're just going through the motions, I promise you it's called you're letting, the, you're letting your body control your mind instead of the spirit Spirit of God control you. And every time it's on us. Whether we want to admit it or not, whether we want to get honest with that or not, I'm saying the problem's us, amen. It ain't nobody else's fault. I tell you, the touch of God's gone out of your life. The breath of God's gone. And the blessings of God are gone. And you will always find it at your doorstep. You will always find that God never left you. But somewhere along the line, you've left him behind. Somewhere along the line, you want to do it yourself. Somewhere along the line, you thought in your mind that you could do it. If I'm telling you what happens every time, you'll bound your mind up. And your mind will get stuck in a prison. And you feel like you can't get out. I'm telling you, you need to come to the Lord. Amen. Let God renew the inner man. Let the Spirit of God come back in your mind. Amen. Flood your heart. Amen. Well, I'm glad there's power and peace in that mind. Amen. If we get our, heart, our mind and heart stayed on Him. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah. Amen. He said, perfect peace. Have there was, or, that's another verse. Amen. Isaiah. But the Bible says in Isaiah, he said, uh, uh, that, 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 help us, Lord. Uh, it's in 26, verse 3. Amen. You just quoted it, Brother Ross. About that. Uh, keeping our mind stayed on Him. Amen. Well, I'm if we keep our minds stayed on God, God will give us peace. I'm glad there's peace to have, amen. Do you realize this world, you know what this world desires more than anything? They can tell you anything they want to tell you. But I'm telling you what they're really after? Peace of mind. They want peace of mind. You know what they think in their mind? If I get enough riches, I can have peace of mind. If I have enough popularity, I can get peace of mind. I'm telling you, if I can do enough drugs, it'll, it'll settle my, it'll give me peace of mind. If I can drink my problems away, it'll give me peace of mind. If I can run around and, and, uh, and, and do all these un, uh, uh, wicked things, amen, do all these unnatural things, and, I, and they think in their mind it'll bring peace to my mind, uh, it'll settle my mind. But I'm telling you, that's the body that's decaying and dying, uh, that is controlling the mind, uh, and it'll never bring peace. Uh, but the new man will bring peace, amen. God will bring peace to the new man. We're standing through our eyes, closed, our heads bowed. God help us, Lord. Lord, I pray you'd help us, God. No doubt in my mind, Lord, in our heart, Lord, we ever won. God would have to plead guilty. God, we allow our mind to get bound.